Previously, only in Shun's Apprentice. Yeah, see? Who in your group needs to leave today? It's going to be a difficult one. I honestly feel the team... Uh, you don't give me any of that, oh, we all did it together. I need you to give me a name. Why? On the delivery part, there was a couple of stumbles and I'm only basing it on that because I feel the delivery of majority was almost flawless, but perhaps on the few stumbles, I'm just pointing Nabila out on that. Nabila? It would be Yasin. And I know what it looks like right now, but it's not tit for tat. The reason why I say that is because he was the leader of the team. And... You should have thrown out your terrible idea. Definitely. On multiple occasions, I kept on asking, does anybody else have anything to bring onto the table? And everyone said, no, we're happy. In fact, that was why Vicky suggested that I be the leader. Vicky? I would say Yasin for the lead as he was our team member. Amo, you should leave today. Purely from, I'd say, the captain of, of the ship, then I'd have to go with Yassi. Actually, the person with the lowest score in your team today was Vicky. But Yasin, your team has spoken. And you're the second person to leave the Insurance Apprentice 2020. You're dismissed. These guys. I think you can see from the way the scoring works, your own perceptions. It's wonderful to hold our leaders accountable. But you can't only do that when you're standing here in this room. We need to hold them accountable while we're working. If you don't agree with something, say something. We could have easily let the whole group go today. And that would have been because you're doing nothing about it. You're allowing this to unfold. Um, I hope all of you will learn something out of this. And that uh, you'll start the next, the next task off on a positive note. And hold each other accountable, please. Thank you. I uh, feel disappointed getting the news that I'm going home after task three. Uh, it eats me a bit. We just felt that it was a bit unfair the way the voting was done. And I'll just have to take a learning curve from this and, and use it in the future and, and just move forward. Saying if the judges are going to make a call, they must make it. Yeah, I think it's just. It felt as though we just threw someone under the bus. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, eh? And I don't think it's going to get any more easier. Being a leader of a group and agreeing to agreeing to a choice or part of a presentation that I didn't think was professional enough, but just moved along. It was purely just based on the fact that he was the lead. And that's the only thing I could actually put on it. Other than that, we all contributed and worked towards what we all believed was a good outcome. 
I should have just stood up and changed it immediately. But as the leader, I should take responsibility for that. And that's the biggest reason or the main reason why I'm going home today. Last week, Yassin was eliminated from the Insurance Apprentice 2020 after his team nominated him as the weakest link during a tense boardroom session. With seven contestants remaining and a brand new task sponsored by Sazria, the heat is on the apprentices to show the judges what they are made of. Will they be able to work together in their teams to impress the judges with new and innovative solutions and if not, whose apprentice journey is about to come to an end. It's week three and I'm feeling the pressure. Last week's task guys was tough. We lost Yasin. Look, I think the task was quite quite difficult. I mean they gave us two and a half hours. Here we are. We need to get going again. Game face. And yeah, deliver what the, the judges want. We're in week four. I'm still feeling pretty confident about my chances in the competition. Well, Memory, firstly, thank you <laughs> for being such a, a great leader. <laughs> Today, if you look around us, one of us are not going to be here, and it's not going to be easy because we've sort of built a bond in this little time that we've spent together. So I think in terms of doing really well today and turning it around, the one thing that I am going to take is I'm not going to sit back and not give my ideas. I think I like the way you play with our strengths because that's important in order to get you know different views, different content. In as much as we are conscious of what they want, just to be comfortable and relaxed because sometimes yes by trying to give them what you think they want, that's when you actually go wrong. I definitely want to be in the winning team this week, leading that team, and um, leading that team to victory. I'm still sad about your scene though. Oh, I'm gosh. gonna sad. miss him so much. Eh? <laughs> I think that's why we got emotional. It wasn't the fact that we lost, it was the fact that we lost someone that we actually grew close to. Yeah. I'm expecting more of such difficult decisions to come. I felt sorry for them, you know, um, and also, I know it's a competition at the end of the day, but it's difficult when you take out a team member. I'm going to use this task and this opportunity this week to prove myself. You got to think, you got to think, you got to push, push, push. This is a competition and there's only one winner. It is a new day and it's a new task, a new week. Let's do this. Welcome back to task four of the Insurance Apprentice 2020. I know yesterday was fairly traumatic uh, and I know there were some tears uh, amongst the group afterwards. But I just want to remind all of you that this is a competition. It's a contest and there can only be one person that wins this. If you don't think you have what it takes to go that far. You can always retire from the contest. We're very fortunate that Sazria has uh, continued to sponsor this show since the very first season. And I'm joined by Farida Benjamin uh, this morning who will take us through the task. My name is Farida Benjamin. I'm the Insurance Operations Executive Manager at Sazria SOC Limited. So today, the task for the contestants is more centered around communities and community risk. As South Africans, we are very fond of exercising our democratic right to protest to such an extent that it actually trips over into the criminality or the destruction of property. How do we help communities? How do we help the youth? How do we help everybody to take a step forward in the right direction? I'm going to tell you about our task and just a little bit of information and then what we need from you. Sazri has been experiencing in 2019 high volumes of claims coming through from the Duduans area in the Western Cape as well as the Alexandra Township here in Johannesburg. Socioeconomic reasons driven by the current political climate led to violent protests as well as destruction of property. So the task for you today, conduct research on these communities 
What are the drivers for violent protest? Key opportunities to support communities in order to affect de a decrease in SASRIA's claims and risk exposure and mitigate these actions of claims in the future. The solution must be sustainable for at least three to five years. And we also need a proposed business plan that must include your budget and the return on investment and your sustainability plan. I'd like to just say I'm incredibly excited about this task. Um, it speaks to my personal values in terms of how do we as the insurance community address the socio-economic issues such as poverty, unemployment, access to opportunities. Thanks Nadia. So the teams today, uh, you'll be split into two groups uh, yet again. So in team one we've got JP, Nabila and Memory. And in team two, we've got Sipa Mandla, Sebastian, Amon Gelang, and Vicky. That's all. Thank you. Today, we've been tasked by uh, CESRIA to address the growing concern of the strikes in uh, the country, particularly the areas of the Duran as well as Alexandra. Our task is to mitigate against social unrest, which causes all that damage that lands up uh, being claims at CESRIA. As we walked in, uh, we sort of pose the question, okay, so who's the team leader? And then immediately Memory says, well, I think Nabila must be the team leader. We almost feel like Nabila has something to prove given what happened um, last week. Maybe what we can do is we each take up the points that are noted here and then we do research and, and point out what stands out for you the most. I definitely feel the pressure in being the leader today, uh, especially with last week's episode where Yasin got voted off and he was the leader. Alex seems to be heavily weighted towards crime and substance abuse. abuse yeah. I'm the team leader for our team. I nominated myself for the position. Having seen that no one was really putting their name forward after what happened last week, I think everybody's scared to be team leader. Oh, let's go with Alex. And then, and then let's, let's start unpacking these three yeah. issues. I believe we've got a good team, but we don't know what the other team is, is, is cooking. Communities like Alexandria feel like they're not being heard. The communication is a barrier. A uh, rampant crime. We're going to have to team up with JMPD. Um, we've chosen the Dorans as our community. I think the the challenge that we face with today's task is really just getting to the crux of the needs that these people who are striking have. So there's quite a bit of work into what that community is, what the, the people, socioeconomic issues. One of the biggest problems there is that um, the people are solely dependent on agriculture. I think we, we have a good grasp of what SASRIA is all about and what the objective of the task is. The idea, the innovative idea, what are we going to do that's different? We definitely have a good uh, team dynamic today. There's obviously strong personalities between myself and memory. As we think about it, let's just consider to say which other professions can come in. We mustn't take away the accountability of, of the population. municipality because they almost feel like you're coming to our territory. You know, it's the territorial thing. I'm a bit uncertain in terms of if we fill the brief for the task. With Alex, yeah. the solutions, so. you can pinpoint them, and I think we can come up with something. Yes, we cannot solve all the That's problems. That's what I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, we, we did spend a lot of time arguing over ideas. The reason and the crux of this problem starts with the people. So whatever solution we come up with, it has to be sustainable. So let's hash out now, what problems can we potentially have solutions to? So right now, we've done basically all our research, we've discussed it, we have an idea of what we're going to present on. If we can ignite tourism there, there will be other alternatives other than just being a laborer. The drivers are essentially linked to the type of community that we have. These are real life tangible solutions. I think in a lot of instances, people come into communities yes. and propose solutions that don't speak to what the community sees yes, as the exactly. issues and the problems. Yes. We're providing a solution that is not about training necessarily, but an involvement of the community. I think we, we're going to nail this and let's just shoot the lights out. I think we've got a good idea, team. Yes. I think we yes. should I think high five so. on that. Yeah. All right, let's do it. One, two, three. Go! <laughs> <laughs>
So the Duran, we we have looked at the community. Sorry, we have looked at the community of the Duran and possible solutions regarding the unrest in that community specifically. What we'd like to do is we would like to change the narrative of this community. The way that we plan to do this is through tourism and also by getting mitigation between the community and the government officials or the municipality rather. Some of the drivers or the unhappiness that the community is having is mainly regarding the low wage the low wages that the community is being paid or those employees that are employed by the farmers that they um in the community. The other thing that we, that the other drivers are regarding um, sanitation and also clean water. The Duran is a small community that is in the center of the, of a valley, the Hax River Valley. And the story goes that Elise Moraine was a farmer's daughter. The Hax River, which means witch, comes from a tale that says that she comes out and, as a witch on certain nights and, um, and she then cries and she um, cries and sort of howls as a result of her broken heart. What we want to do is we want to change the narrative of this community and leverage of its rich history and culture and even the story that goes behind this valley that surrounds the, Dur the Duran community. You've heard the story and the narrative regarding the, the witch and, and, and the Dorans is a direct translation of the thorns and we thought for that reason we'll call this witch thorn. These people aren't enjoying the community, they're facing poverty, the circumstances are dire. So we're looking at changing that narrative to something which is more positive and uplifting. The one aspect is to create it as a tourism destination. Now many have asked, well why that particular area, have you seen it, it's not really a type of place that you'd go as a tourist destination. Well I'll argue that for example Swellendam, which is only 130 kilometers away and one and a half hours away, is very much a similar type of scenario with similar background. If you go to Swellendam now, it's guest houses, it's uh, tractor rides, nurseries, wine tasting, a whole host of other things and we think that by in, in, uh, empowering the community and, and having them uh, facilitate these type of tourism destinations, helping the farmers build restaurants, um, developing skills for those things, will, will actually feed off very nicely in that particular location. When you have a situation where the sole source of income is agriculture, and agriculture laborers are paid are one of the lowest paid sectors in the economy, you will have social unrest. Where Sastra comes in is that the social unrest because of the lack of stability of jobs and youth people not being invested in anything to do um, then reaches that social unrest. We have an opportunity. Imagine a festival where 2,000 people, students, congregate to celebrate love. Now, the town is centered around a love story, a tragic love story. People who were not employed now are f finding employment in the fact that you have tourists coming on. Thanks. Um, do, you, do you know anything about the crime rate? In 2018 it was 2,400 and in 2019 it decreased to 2,100. Uh, 2,100. Yeah, somewhere around there. So, yes. so is, is, it, is it the kind of place that people want to go camping? It's not the kind of place people currently want to go camping, but that was the case with Opikopi. So in terms of the task, have you looked at Swellendam and the areas that you're talking about and their exposure to Sazria in terms of how many, how, what's the incidents look like? Have you looked maybe at Google, see if there's been protest action in Swellendam? Because I can confirm there has been. So my question is, does this reduce my risk? Although it's a, it's, a, it's a nice narrative to, to paint as a solution, um, we must keep in mind that it will be small incremental changes and I think that's necessary in this particular community given the fact that they've suffered for probably the last decade. For them to even get a little bit of change, increasing in salary, some community involvement, working and, and better wages and at least sanitary, a better sanitary environment, I think that will at least on that basis alone improve uh, the issues and, and simmer down the tensions. Thank you. Thank you. You might leave. So the presentation started off shaky. I did the executive summary and the introduction as well as the drivers. And I think I again let the nerves get the better of me and I stumbled in the beginning. This week's presentation, we crumbled. We were destroyed. We fell apart. And the questions finished us off. It was Armageddon. <laughs> I won't even lie. 
I think the presentation itself got off to a rocky start. Uh, Nabila stumbled quite a bit. I wouldn't want my teammates, you know, to be at the bottom here as, as a result of me uh, getting nervous in the beginning of the presentation. I think the very idea itself, which I think I came up with, might be pulled to pieces, and that means I might be going home today. Welcome back. Uh, who's the team leader? I'm the team leader. Amo, what's the name of your team? We care. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you. With hundreds of service delivery issues, riots, strike, murder, all of these things speak to something. Who cares? We care. My colleagues and I are here today to present to you, the board of directors, on our pitch as to why we care. We have identified the district township of Alexander, indicating why we find that there is a need for change. What needs to be done? How do we go about this? Board of Directors, we have identified the key drivers in the protest in Alexander, and they are the widespread of substance abuse, the rampant crimes, the poverty and unemployment, as well as lack of service delivery. We see a road to recovery. And with crime, we see a solution. One of them actually being prefabbed police satellite stations. These will be run by solar panels, as well as a community night watch. Speaking directly into an organization that we have identified, which is present right now within the Alexander community, which is Sanka. They are actively involved in the, in, in the environment, continuously doing social development. What we have identified is a lack of social workers. We have identified that there's a lack of social interventions between um, the, 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 the people as well as organization. What we entrust to do is to collaborate and bring this into homes. What we want to do further into identifying social workers, we want to also introduce a program which will directly deal with um, uh, skills shortage, will deal with in, uh, unemployment. We've identified a lady called Nontlanta Joy who's established a business that is growing bounds. What she does, she basically takes plastics and she grows vegetables out of plastics. If this program is introduced to Alexandra, it will combat uh, unemployment. Therefore, you won't have uh, these individuals stringing along the neighborhood, not having anything to do, but you're having them actually developing themselves. You're having them having a job, and therefore there's a, a prospect at the end of the day. Poverty, unemployment, result in despondency, in feeling dilapidated, in feeling self in self-sufficient. By addressing these issues through our programs, you then create hope within the community. A community that then stops relying on the government for basic service delivery, which then has a ripple effect on service delivery protests. Board of Directors, we come to you as we care, and we approach you for you to invest into our initiatives. A ransom amount of two million rand in which we have viewed and seen that it will turn into an investment over five years of 4.8 million rand, in which this will be regenerated into the projects, thus ensuring sustainability. Question for you, in terms of Alexandra Township, in the, the size of the community, so one of the big items that led to service delivery protest in the last um, 12 months is the fact that there was a huge fire in the community and we know that people are living in informal settlements and that is growing continuously. How do you see that playing a role in what you're proposing here, the expansion of that community? We are aware of a partnership between Sazria and Santa mm -hmm. that has sought to actually upskill municipalities on how to combat and have a disaster recovery plan. By us approaching you, we are hoping that there will be a cross-functional element between our initiatives and the pre-existing initiatives within the Sasria stable and thus using and leveraging off of what's already in the company to then start implementing similar risk mitigants within that community. 
Great. Thanks, guys. You're out of time. You may leave. Well, the task is over. There's nothing more that can be said or done. Based on our presentation for today's task, it is safe to assume that we'll most likely still be here next week. Amo Khaleng has led us very, very well in this challenge. I think we spoke to the core issues within communities and the challenges that townships in South Africa find themselves in. Yes, we feel we did well, but we don't know how the other team did. We don't know how well they performed, and we also don't know what criteria the judges are using. So we will have to see what happens. Wow, uh, that's quite a massive chasm between these yeah. two groups mm -hmm. today. Um, I think the quality was very poor out of one, mm. um, yeah. and then quite a polar opposite on the other. So I think the one person really missed the brief, um, struggled in presenting, and did not come across um, very well. I'm a bit disappointed in myself. I felt like I could have done better. I've expected so much more from him. Mm -hmm. And every single task, he's kind of just, yeah, he's kind of there, a little bit of a showman, but mm. not a lot of substance behind yeah. that. That really, really worries me. I don't think that we put our best foot forward. The presentation was lacking. The idea itself had some issues. Um, Amor is just, he, it feels to me like he's getting stronger yeah. Um, yeah. with every single task. Yeah. Um, he's just kind of keeps pulling these rabbits out of yeah. a hat. Yeah. Amor is team leader. He stepped up and he guided the team. I think as a group, as a team, they complemented each other in terms of strengths and weaknesses. I mean, I think this, the, the team dynamic was so good. And I'm thinking how much of the individual weakness did it mask? I am so scared of the feedback session because I think we bombed big time. Uh, it's clear to me. Um, I mean, judging this when, when they're not that close. Mm. In fact, what am I saying? They're not even not that close. They are miles apart. They're miles apart. I'm a bit uncertain in terms of if we fill the brief for the task. And I think we could have saved some time and actually prepared a lot more. So for me, if I look at it as a group dynamic, leading is not just about being the leader. Leading is encompassing, managing up, managing down, and managing yeah. across. And I think that was what was lacking. Yeah. It was an idea. They ran with it, not thinking it completely through and missing the brief. So I think, I think it's clear then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get them back in. I want to thank Sazria and in particular Farida Benjamin for joining us today and I'd like to hand over to you for your comments. Thank you Simon and thank you everybody, the panel, the participants. Today our task was aimed at looking at risk reduction in changing the behaviours of people in the communities and ensuring that we are sustainable as Sazria and making our communities more sustainable as well. And I can say that one of the teams really blew me away with the way they took that brief and came up with a concept that's not only a concept that was presented here, but I'm actually taking back to my office and looking at how do we look at working with the local municipality to get that off the ground. That's brilliant, thank you. Nadia? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's fantastic. Uh, in terms of taking the ideas back, I too thought that one team was exceptional. Um, but I think really there was one team that missed the mandate completely. I was just grateful that nobody did any play acting or read anything. Um, that was a relief for me, so there's definitely progress. Um, of course, there can only be one team that wins, and, and as you've heard today, um, there is a clear winner. Um, could I have Team Witchthorn step forward, please? Today you're the losing team, so congratulations to Team Wike. Good job. Unfortunately, the person with the lowest score has to leave the competition today. Now, there's only three of you, I'm not going to put it to a, to a vote. 
Nabila, you were the leader of the team today. Yes, I was. How do you think you guys did? After hearing your feedback now, we've clearly missed the mark. It's firstly on the location that was chosen, um, and the geographical area that was chosen. Um, was that your idea? Uh, I initially thought of uh, Alexandra, uh, but then, you know, we had, um, we had discussed it and then uh, Memory and uh, JP also pointed out that uh, a lot of initiatives were being done in Alexandra, so we should probably look at uh, the Dwaran, and uh, that's why we went with that. You guys just seem to have picked an area that none of you really knew much about, you know, so even if you don't live in Gauteng, you've heard of Alex, you've seen it on the news, you know what happens there, you know how close it is to, to Santon, it's in Joburg. So there's a lot of media attention on it generally. So we, we were just a little mystified as to why you chose a very far outlying place. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be initiatives running in the outlying areas, but you, you almost set yourselves up for a harder task because you, you chose a place that you didn't really have a lot of, a lot of information on. Can I also yeah. add that I think um, the choice of the Durans, even if you didn't have a lot of information just in terms of the public, publicly accessible information is fine, but there was information in terms of what Sazria were dealing with that you just simply didn't bring up. And a quick little bit of research in terms of what has happened in the Durans and what should we be preventing, I would have thought would have been your first point of call. You know, choosing to have a festival um, to try and change things in a community that's clearly got some deep issues. Um, I, I felt like you had missed a step in, in what you were offering. In fact, when these guys pull off their projects, they can call you in and you can put on the festival that you wanted to. Because you just, there were too many unanswered issues, unresolved issues that, that still needed to be dealt with before you could actually do what you wanted to do. Navila, I really appreciated you trying to bring some kind of empathy or storyline into it, but I also felt that it was, it was out of place. You know, you, you kind of took us on a journey, you used up almost five minutes of your time to take us on this thing about why the area is named what it is and the history of it. Um, you know, I kept looking at my watch um, and I thought something better was going to come and it, it, it just didn't. So we have to make a call based on, on the scores of the day. Um, the lowest score leaves the competition. JP, you are safe today. Memory, Nabila, the third person to leave the competition. Nabila, you're dismissed. Thank you. It's definitely uh, disappointing to be voted out. It is a competition and unfortunately, if you have a bad day, um, you know, you have to go. This platform has given me the opportunity to learn so much. It has clarified a lot of, um, you know, questions that I have in terms of myself and my abilities. To the remaining contestants, my message is definitely continue what you're doing, believe in yourself, and don't be afraid to learn and to say that you, that you don't know. Always ask questions. Team Wike, outstanding job. Um, we loved the presentation. Um, I was actually speechless. It's a massive feat. Um, it doesn't happen often. Um, I, I thought you really hit the mark. Amo, you led a great team. Um, your part of the presentation was, was superb. So well done on, on pulling off an excellent task. And as you've heard, um, the sponsor is probably going to be using your idea. And you might actually make a difference in a lot of people's lives. Um, with what you've come up with here today. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, just to all of you as a group, there are some of you that are coasting within other groups. And just because you're in the winning group each time doesn't mean that you're safe. 
Um, it just means that you've had immunity from this one task. And I think that you're all going to have to think about that as we move into the next task. Thank you, that's all. I've got a favorite for this year. Really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Point, point. No, I'm not going. <laughs> but you know what? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, this team really pulled off something. Oh, yeah. Now. They did. And it's I said it at the beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. this, this for me is such, a, this is such a close task because it's about the socioeconomic stuff. What I love about it is that it's not Alexandra. What they've proposed, we can it's actually anyway. replicate anyway. over anyway. and over. And at the cost that they're talking about and the sustainability of it, Brilliant. it is a game changer. It can work. Yes. And that's what we were looking for. Um, um, thank you. Uh, no, thank, thank, thank you guys. Well. Couldn't have done um, without you guys. You gave us confidence that we actually are going in, t in the right direction. I think today we showed what collaboration can do. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we would have done it without each other. And I thank you guys for the help. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, think, I think the wider audience will enjoy this episode. <laughs> it's going to impact more lives than just our own.